Have you ever considered the universe's beginnings? Have you ever wondered how it all started? Our studies of the cosmos raise more unsolved questions the more inquisitive we become about the huge cosmic unknowns. The ultimate nature and origin of the universe and everything in it are the same enormous mysteries that are always revealed when you inquire about the nature of everything, including where it is, where it comes from, and how it came to be. With its grasp of the universe's beginnings, science has come a long way. We now have a better grasp of the universe thanks to the Big Bang Theory and the most recent advancements in astrophysics and cosmology. However, many people are still puzzled by the topic of who created the nothing if the universe came from nothing. Where did the matter that caused the Big Bang originate from? And what initially took place to create that matter? Let's find out. Even when known uncertainties are taken into consideration, the whole set of observations that we have now collected about the universe point to a remarkably consistent picture. Our universe is formed of matter rather than antimatter, abides by the same physical laws everywhere, and began with a fiery Big Bang some 13.8 billion years ago, at least as far as we can tell. It is subject to the laws of general relativity, is gravitationally expanding and cooling, and is dominated by dark energy at 68% and dark matter at 27%, with the remaining components being ordinary matter, neutrinos and radiation. Of course, today's universe is teeming with galaxies, stars, planets, heavy elements and in at least one place intelligent, technologically evolved life. These structures didn't always exist, instead they developed as a result of cosmic evolution. Scientists in the 20th century made a tremendous scientific advance when they were able to recreate the timeline for how our universe evolved from a fairly uniform, devoid of complex structure, hydrogen and helium only universe to the structure rich universe we experience today. Starting from the present, we can travel back in time and inquire about the origins of any specific structure or component thereof. We can ask, fine, but where did that come from and how did that originate after each response we receive, going back until we are compelled to say, we don't know, at least not yet. Finally, we are able to reflect on our situation and ask ourselves, how did that come about and is there a possibility that it could have come from nothing? The complex molecules that make up the ordinary matter in the universe today, including the life we know today, must have developed from the periodic table's atoms. These atoms weren't present when the universe first began. Instead, they developed during many generations of stars that were formed and died while recycling their nuclear fusion waste into new stars. Planets and sophisticated chemistry would not be possible without them. We must extrapolate back into the very early universe to a point when our understanding of physics is highly speculative in order to obtain more matter than antimatter. As every reaction we've ever generated or witnessed can only create or destroy equal amounts of matter and antimatter, the laws of physics, as we currently understand them, are in some ways symmetric between matter and antimatter. The universe we had, however, had to have found a means to produce matter-antimatter asymmetry when none had previously been despite beginning in a very hot and dense state where matter and antimatter could both be formed in abundant copious amounts. Why is there dark matter now since the rest of the universe seemed to function just fine without it in the beginning? All of these scenarios demand energy, so there must have been some means to create this where there wasn't one before. Then from where did all that energy originate? Perhaps, according to cosmic inflation, our main hypotheses of the universe's pre-Big Bang origins, it really did originate from nothing. This needs to be explained a little bit. When you picture the hot Big Bang, you have to picture something that was extremely hot, dense, high energy and nearly uniform. When we inquire how did this come about, we often have two choices. We could take Lady Gaga's approach and say that it had to have been born this way. There is no other explanation for the primordial conditions which we refer to as the characteristics of the universe and its creation. This strategy is known among theoretical physicists as 
giving up. Alternatively, we could try to create a theoretical process that could account for the starting circumstances, eking out specific predictions that deviate from those of the mainstream prevalent theory, and then going out to try and quantify the crucial parameters. Using the second strategy led to the discovery of cosmic inflation, which fundamentally altered our understanding of the origins of the universe. Let's go back much further. The protons and neutrons that make up the atomic nucleus were the first long-lived matter particles of any type. About a ten thousandth of a second after the Big Bang, they appeared. There truly wasn't any material prior to it in the conventional meaning of the word. Yet physics allows us to continue moving backward in time to physical processes that came before any stable matter. The so-called Great United Epoch is reached as a result. As a result of our inability to generate enough energy in our experiments to investigate the kinds of processes that were active at the time, we have now entered the territory of theoretical physics. Yet it is conceivable that the physical universe was composed of a mixture of transient elementary particles such as quarks, which are the fundamental constituents of protons and neutrons. There existed about equal amounts of matter and antimatter, since each type of matter particle, such as the quark, has an antimatter mirror image counterpart that is almost identical to it, varying just slightly. Yet, since matter and antimatter instantly disintegrate when they come together, it follows that these particles were constantly being produced and destroyed. But how did these particles first come into being? Even a vacuum, which is supposed to represent empty spacetime, is full of physical activity in the form of energy fluctuations according to quantum field theory. Particles may emerge from these fluctuations only to quickly dissipate again. This may sound more like a mathematical quirk than actual physics, but multiple experiments have found such particles. Particles are continually being generated and destroyed seemingly out of nothing in the space-time vacuum state. Yet, perhaps the only thing that this actually reveals to us is that, despite its name, the quantum vacuum is something rather than nothing. David Albert, a philosopher, famously criticized Big Bang theories that claim to create anything out of nothing. What if we were to speculate on the origin of space-time? Finally, we can turn the clock back even further into the Planck Epoch, a time so far in the past of the cosmos that even the greatest theories of physics are no longer valid. Only one ten millionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of a second has passed since the Big Bang when this era began. At this point, quantum fluctuations started to affect space and time. General relativity, which applies on vast cosmic scales, and quantum mechanics, which governs the micro-world of particles, are typically handled independently by physicists. But to really grasp the Planck period, we need a complete theory of quantum gravity, combining the two. Although there have been attempts, such as string theory and loop quantum gravity, we still do not have a complete theory of quantum gravity. Ordinary space and time are generally viewed in these attempts as emerging, much like the waves on the surface of a deep ocean. Space and time, as we know them, are the result of microscopic, deeper quantum processes that make little sense to us because we are animals of the macroscopic universe. Our conventional idea of space and time fails in the Planck period, which means that our conventional conception of cause and effect also fails. Despite this, every candidate quantum gravity theory describes a physical phenomenon that existed throughout the Planck epoch, a quantum antecedent to conventional space and time. But from where did that originate? It may be feasible to use causality to explain one aspect of the Planck Epoch cosmos in terms of another, even if it does not apply in the usual sense. Sadly, even the most advanced physics at this point is utterly unable to offer solutions. Until we make greater headway toward a theory of everything, we won't be able to give any conclusive response. At this point, the best we can confidently assert 
is that physics has not yet discovered any instances of something manifesting from nothing. In essence, inflation suggests that perhaps the hot Big Bang was preceded by a time when an extremely high energy density was present in the fabric of space itself, causing the universe to expand at an unrelenting inflationary rate and then, when inflation ended, that energy got transferred into matter and antimatter and radiation, creating what we see as the hot Big Bang, the aft phase of the expansion. In graphic detail, this not only produces a universe with uniform temperature everywhere, spatial flatness, and no remnants of a fictitious great unified period, but it also forecasts a special kind and spectrum of seed density fluctuations which we later saw. The entire observable universe as we know it today was produced by a natural process from nothing more than empty space, albeit empty space that is densely packed with field energy. The enormous idea of creating the universe out of nothing may not be appealing to everyone. Unfortunately for all of us, inflation, by its very nature, destroys any data that might have been imprinted on our observable universe from a previous state. We can only come to conclusions about things for which tests involving our physical world can be established, despite the boundless nature of our imaginations. Any other idea, including the idea of total emptiness, is just a product of our imaginations, no matter how rational it may seem. The question of who created the nothing is somewhat illogical from a philosophical standpoint. The idea of creation indicates that there was already something that later underwent a transformation into something different. Nevertheless, there was no such thing as before when the cosmos was created from nothing. Hence, it makes little sense to question who produced the nothing. The question of who created the nothing, on the other hand, is incredibly important from a theological standpoint. The existence of a heavenly entity or creator who created the cosmos is a common belief in many religions. For instance, in Christianity, it is held that the universe was created by God from nothing. This raises the age-old theological query of who created God, though. Where did God originate if He is the ultimate creator? Some theologians contend that as God is uncreated and eternal, He dwells beyond space and time. Some contend that God doesn't necessarily require a creator and is merely the ultimate manifestation of the existence of the universe. The idea of a multiverse is yet another theory that makes an effort to explain how the universe came to be. According to this theory, there are a lot of parallel universes that are part of the larger multiverse. Our universe is just one of them. The physical rules and characteristics of each of these universes may differ. In accordance with this idea, a quantum fluctuation in a higher dimensional space may have resulted in the development of a brand new universe with its own distinct features. This notion has not yet been supported by empirical data, thus it is still primarily hypothetical. In the end, the intricate and philosophical subject of who or what created the world and the material from which it arose has perplexed people for ages. Science continues to investigate and test numerous theories, such as quantum fluctuation and the multiverse, in order to better comprehend the birth of the universe, while religious and spiritual faiths provide their own interpretations. So, how do you think the universe was created? Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.